Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. Let's go. Everybody, it's Mark from the Modest Audiophile channel. I want to say thank you so much for finding your way here. I really appreciate it. As uh, I haven't made the intro yet, but as the intro stated, we're going to talk about Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. I have to check that. Yes, uh, Analog Productions, 45 RPM, released, I believe, in 2024, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, more on that in a few minutes here. Look at all the lights dancing off of this thing, too. Um, this was part of the 75th anniversary of Atlantic Records audiophile series. I'll put the picture here. 75 historic titles handpicked and supervised by Analog Productions CEO Chad Kassam. Mastered from the original analog tapes or best available source by top mastering engineers cut at 45 RPM and pressed on 180 gram heavyweight vinyl. And it's done by uh, QRP, Quality Record Pressings. So this was a, I bought a couple albums, three albums actually, over the last month or so that I just wanted to kind of scratch the itch and find out what the hype is all about. This is one of them and I got two more that I'll do hopefully later on this month. So yeah, a couple, what we'll do today is we're gonna go forth and do a little bit of background, not much, and then we'll get into how this thing sounds, which is absolutely freaking incredible. And then we'll go through a couple of the things that I thought were pretty amazing through some of the songs. Then we'll wrap this whole thing up and get you out of here, okay? So you can go and grab your favorite beverage, stop listening to me, and actually put an album on and take care of yourself, all right? First, we're gonna talk about the background a little bit, okay? So I'll put some pictures, hopefully, up here uh, on the album while I'm talking so you don't have to look at this face, and then we'll, we'll be off and running. Welcome to my night, and a couple things I learned by the way. Welcome to my nightmare is the debut solo studio album by Alice Cooper, released on February 28th, 1975 by Atlantic Records. A concept album, its songs played in sequence from a journey through the nightmares of a child named Steven. The album inspired the Alice Cooper the Nightmare TV special, a worldwide concert tour in 75, and his Welcome to My Nightmare concert film in 1976. Most of Lou Reed's band joined Cooper for this record. Didn't know that. Also didn't know um, that the Alice Cooper band ceased right before this album was cut. Didn't know that. I mean, my, my history with Alice Cooper, I know all the hits. Right, I own Billion Dollar Babies, um, but I haven't listened to it in quite some time. But the hits, I knew the hits, right? The hits are I'm 18, School's Out, Elected, No More Mr. Nice Guy, Billion Dollar Babies. In fact, I remember being on the school bus, grammar school bus, and hearing um, School's Out, or we were all singing it. Uh, yeah, so a little bit of age here, but um, is any probably good Gen Xer knows, you heard this stuff when you were in grammar school too. So I didn't have a lot of background with Alice Cooper. He's always been around, you know, around Halloween time and blah, blah, blah. So getting this record was a complete white canvas approach to me. I really didn't have an opinion on it one way or the other. From a soundstage and imaging perspective, whew, this thing is amazing and we'll get into that here in a few minutes. Talk about a couple more things about the uh, the credits on this album, and we'll get into how it sounds and so on and so forth. This was recorded at Soundstage Studios in Toronto, the Record Plant New York City, Electric Ladyland Studios, I believe that's in New York as well, and A&R Studios. This was mastered at Bernie Grunman Mastering, and the lacquer was cut by Chris Bellman, and it was also mastered by Chris Bellman. The producer on this, was uh, was Bob Ezrin. Now, I've heard the name a couple times before, Bob Ezrin, but I just thought it'd be noteful to, um, to give you a little bit of background on Bob Ezrin for those who don't know. Maybe also explains why this album was so good. Bob Ezrin, uh, Canadian music producer and keyboardist, best known for his work with, get this, Lou Reed, Alice Cooper, 
Aerosmith, Kiss, Pink Floyd, Deep Purple, Peter Gabriel, Andrea Bocelli, and Fish. And then also in the 21st century, it says here, he's worked with the Deftones in 30 Seconds to Mars. So thought that was interesting. Now, let's talk about the packaging a little bit, okay? Because the packaging, as usual, with, a, a, <laughs> with an Analog Productions release is flipping fantastic. As I showed you earlier, look at all the reflections of all the lights that I got going on in here. This thing is so high gloss. Here's the front. Let's open this up. Wonderful gatefold. Inside you will find all of the lyrics and the credits per song on who did what. And then we go on the back and uh, another wonderful back here as well. This thing is solid. It is, again, it's no mistake. It's Analog Productions. It's a fabulous cover. A little bit more about the, uh, the condition of the album itself. Flat, flat. Silent. Black. Abyss. Silent. You will not hear any surface noise on this thing, or I didn't. No surface noise. It's like you're playing a digital file. It's, it's truly amazing. Um, what a great, great production uh, of this album by Analog Productions. All right, enough of uh, blowing up their skirt. So let's talk about the album here. All right, we want to know, how does it sound? Well, before we get into how it sounds, let me tell you how I listen to it. For those that already know, my apologies. For those that don't know, I'm recording or I'm listening to this on a Audio-Technica LP120 turntable with an upgraded stylus. Take a look at that down below in the description. It is going through a Project P a Project 2 Box S2 phono preamp, which is going to my Rotel A11 Tribute Integrated Amp, and then out these Wharfdale Denton 85th Anniversary Edition speakers. All right, enough of that. Normally what I do is I go through, hey, how's the treble, how's the mids, how's the bass, how's the sound stage, how big, how tall, how's the imaging. This record has got it all. Let me just say that up front. You are left wanting for nothing, absolutely nothing. The bass is fantastic. It oozes out bass right where it's supposed to. Uh, the mids, exquisite mids, you're getting punched in the face <laughs> time and time again. The, uh, the treble, you have all you want and then some. I really, I, I can't articulate anything more than that. It is one of my most enjoyable listens and nobody was more surprised than I was. Again, I knew Alice Cooper from his hits on the radio. I do own an old copy of Billion Dollar Babies. It's not in the best of conditions, but that kind of put my toes in the water there recently. And uh, I am so happy that you got, that I got this. <laughs> um, what I will say is one of the comments that I saw, I think on Discogs, and I wholeheartedly agree. If you are on the fence about this album, just get it, okay? Just get it, it's worth it on so many levels. Enough of that, we'll talk more about that at the end. All right, so we talked about no, nothing wanting for treble, nothing wanting for mids, nothing wanting for bass. It's all there and it's all exquisite. A couple of the, just a couple notes that I wrote about the album in general. Uh, again, incredible image, depth for days. Now, the depth on this thing, speakers are three feet in front of the wall, you're getting Every, every instrument in this album projects into the room. <laughs> yeah. So this the depth is actually in the room and then all the way back, multi, probably three or four feet. The, the space of this room, this container, the walls aren't here. The soundstage is going above the ceiling and it's going left farther than the walls in this, in this space. It... Close your eyes, and this uh, this will take you on a journey for sure. What a what a wonderful soundstage, imaging depth. It's got it hands down. Uh, it's punchy. 
the <laughs> there are certain sections here and we'll talk about some of the songs in particular you will go from quiet quiet to absolute punch in your in the middle of your chest it's awesome another thing that i noticed was that this album was a little bit louder than normal so normally i to uh, vinyl in here the rotella set for 74 volume wise and then i try to average it out around you know, 80 to 85 decibels on average. Needless to say, this was a little bit louder than normal. Probably about another, probably about two decibels louder than normal. So it's cut a little bit hot. I guess you would expect that on a 45 RPM. More room for the grooves on the face of the record. In addition to all that, I will say that this record was so easy to listen to. Although it's complex in a good way, meaning a lot of stuff's going on, it is so easy to listen to. You don't have to strain your ears and, and try to pick out something. It's all there, and it's so easy to listen to. I don't know. I can't articulate it any better or different than that. Can you tell I'm excited about this record? This record, man, what a joy to listen to. So I did a couple DB checks, and the first one was on, I think, the third song on side one. Four sides here, and it was Black Widow. This came in at a low end of 47 decibels, a high end of 95 decibels for an average of 86 decibels. Very dynamic, very dynamic. And then I did a second DB check on the first song on side four, I believe it is. It's called Steven. Really what the whole album is about is this kid named Steven. The low end was 43 decibels, high end was 98 and the average was 82 decibels. Yeah, Steven's got some punch, let me tell you. A lot of dynamics on this album, a lot of dynamics. Again, you're not left wanting for anything if you are a soundstage and imaging person. Apart from the music, which is fantastic, but from a soundstage and imaging, close your eyes, turn the lights down in the room and this thing is a, is a show in your mind's eye from start to finish. Great stuff. Listen to this last. If you're listening to a couple albums during the day or at night or whenever you're listening, whatever your listening session is, unless you've got another Analog Productions or another MoFi or another really excellent sounding soundstage and imaging album, eh, you want to listen to this one last because everything you put on afterwards just isn't quite going to cut it. <laughs> if you follow. Um, at least that's through my experience anyway. All right, let's go to side one. So side one. Side one starts with the title track, Welcome to My Nightmare. And right away when you put the needle down, first of all, you had to double check that the needle's actually down on the vinyl because it is a pool of black abyss as far as sound goes. It is so quiet. You don't even know the needle is down on the record. Uh, it's got a vivid intro, meaning that the music, the very soft cymbals being played here, the, the light stroking of the guitar, and then, of course, Alice's voice really just jump out and, and express themselves in the room with you. You can see Alice just holding on to that mic and, and singing in the same space that you're listening to this record in. Fantastic. Uh, the strings on this just show or give you the, the thought of great amount of depth on this particular song. It's gonna be it. It's gonna be a, something gonna be talking about throughout the rest of this this uh, review. Just the depth, the, the the vividness, the realism, the holographic nature of this album. Really fantastic. Um, I put great guitars after the break. The, the the tones that you're getting out of this this uh, this album are fantastic. If you're a fan of classic rock, in that early to mid 70s crunch really really good i put kaleidoscope of sound organ dancing on top of the sound stage i mean vividly just dancing up here in the sound stage and then later you've got uh you've got the bass and the horns and everything else dancing around on the bottom fantastic way to open up the record excellent excellent song all right we go into song number two on the first side, and that's called Devil's Food. You have a wide, wide soundstage. Guitars are fantastic. The drums come in center behind Alice. And Alice's voice is here, behind it are the drums. You have a great sense of depth. Um, they've got, they're using a flanger on here, and that, um, 
The sound it produces is very cool within the mix and the sound stage of this, and it's dancing back and forth, and um, a little bit of, we'll call, sound stage and imaging candy for the ears. Really, really cool. Uh, but the thing really to pull out on this particular song is Vincent Price, for those of us who are old enough to remember, Vincent Price shows up here to do a monologue in all his glory. This song really start, is really here to set up the next song, which is called The Black Widow. But more on Vincent Price on, in the second song, Devil's Food, Vincent Price comes into the soundstage from the right. And it's almost like he's walking in like an old department store. And you're sitting here and he's walking from right to left, very, you know, slowly. But he's, uh, he's talking about spiders. He's talking about uh, three spiders in particular. And then the last, he, he leaves it and he, again, he discusses more about the Black Widow. And just, uh, again, it's fun. This is a fun record to listen to, again, from soundstage and imaging. Excellent. And uh, yeah, Vincent Price in all his flipping glory is right there in the room with you. Fantastic. And then that goes into the third song, which is The Black Widow. And I put here, vocals are killer. Alice's range. And I didn't know he had such a big range. On this album, you will hear many different voices of Alice. This song will get your head bobbing up and down head banging, bob it up and down, whatever. You can't help yourself. You find your head going up and down on this one. Fantastic. At the end, right before Alice says, pledge allegiance to the Black Widow, you get a scratching effect, like you take your pick and you scratch it along the, 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 the strings, very oh so lightly, but you can hear it perfectly. I mean, it's in the room. It's, it's fantastic. I can't really explain it any more than that. Really, really cool. That guitar scratch jumped out, and I hadn't really heard that before. Side two starts with a song called Some Folks. So my kids, they've both been in, in musical theater for a long time. They're in college. I've got one who is, um, she's going for a Bachelor of Fine Arts in musical theater. And so I've been getting more accustomed to going to a lot of shows, a lot of musicals and a lot of plays and all of that over the last several years. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. This song immediately reminded me of, uh, of Cabaret. For those that don't know what that is, look it up. This song is quite jazzy. It's very the theatrical. Some folks, you got coming out of the right hand side of the soundstage, finger snaps, and eerily present in the room, just mm, right there. On the left side, you've got a hi-hat, kind of playing a little jazzy uh, beat. So, again, snaps on the, on the right, hi-hat on the left, vocal center, mm, it's great. And then, of course, more instruments are added in, right behind um, Alice, behind and maybe a little bit to the left, higher up in the sound stage, a trumpet comes in or horns come in. And again, the imaging is just ridiculous, ridiculous. A couple thing I want to pull out on this one was when he gets to the maybe two thirds away through the song and then towards the end, uh, can't he's, he's saying basically the line, can't live without it. During that section that the pace picks up and upper and the upper left hand side of the sound stage, you're just hearing so vividly, close your eyes, you're actually seeing the piano keys being played and the high register of the piano. Fantastic. Gave you goosebumps. Uh, and a great, great separation of guitars on this. Yeah, really, really good song. I really enjoyed this song. Again, some folks, killer. I put great, yeah, great freaking song. I can see Alice and I can see Alice in this song in particular. I can see this guy. Top hat and tails doing the singing, put a smile on my face, really did. Uh, the horns are right there. This soundstage in particular wraps around you 180 degrees. You're engulfed in this song. Really, really enjoyed it. All right, and then it goes on to the second song and the last song on side two, which is Only Women Bleed. It's a nice ballad. If you're an Alice Cooper fan, you've already heard of it. I've, I heard the song several times, but never, ever, ever like this. Outstanding vocals. Love Alice's voice here. 
This is not the, uh, you know, the metal Alice. This is not the hard rock Alice. This is more of a, it's a ballad. And you can hear his voice uh, vulnerable. It's really, it's really nice. It's real, I said. So vivid and clear. Holographic depth for days. You get the keyboard on the left again, right, right there. I put so quiet, the vinyl again, so, so quiet during the, uh, the passages where not a lot of music is taking place. Um, got a couple things I do want to pull out. Maybe you guys feel this way too. I'm not sure if you're a fan. There's a couple sections here. The high harmonies, which are wonderful. They sound a little beatly to me. A little beatly, you know, maybe coming off of Abbey Roadish. Um, I definitely got that sense, and I don't know if it's a slide guitar or a pedal steel, I'm not sure, but the slide, it gives me a George Harrison vibe. Really cool, was not expecting that at all, and uh, it, it put a nice smile on my face. Um, I put great strings and percussion section, so vivid. I put the sound stage is dancing, especially, again, near the end of the song. The sound stage is absolutely dancing, and you're getting a cool left to right fast panning back and forth. Man, what a song. What a song. What an album. All right, enough of side two. Let's go over to side three. Hey, everybody. It's Mark, and I just want to say thank you so much for coming to the Modest Audio File channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Take a look around. I really appreciate it. If you've been here before and you're back again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Hey, listen, it would really matter a lot to me is if you can go down there and hit like if you like it. If you don't like it, why are you watching? <laughs> but if you like it, yeah, go down there and hit like. And if you want to find a way to support the channel, it's free. You go down there and hit the subscribe button. That would really, that would really help me out. Other than that, let's get back to this freaking wonderful record. Really wonderful record. All right, let's go. So you go out there, get your second record, slap it on, side three, starts with a song called Department of Youth. First thing I put here, sounds freaking great. It's big and wide, outstanding image, and the chorus is absolutely crazy. Chorus is going to punch you in the face on this one. One of the things I want to mention here, there's this kids singing in this too. In most songs, you hear the kids, like Bungalow Bill, right off the White Album. You hear kids, and they're kind of in the background, and it just sounds like one big kid voice. Not this one. This one you can actually hear. Individual kids, individual voices singing. I thought that was remarkable. <laughs> and then at the end, you know, they're talking about power, and I just thought this one thing was funny. During the fade-out, Alice asks, And who gave you the power? Who gave it to you? And the kids go, Donny Osmond! <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Again, another uh, for a Gen Xer, hearing the name Donny Osmond. Uh, yeah, put a little smile on my face and a chuckle. I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard this song before. Really good. Okay, after Department of Youth, we go into Cold Ethel. Great guitar intro I put here. Again, punch you right in the face. And with the, with the dynamic range you're getting in this album, I mean that. You're just... Again, I'm sitting here listening eight feet away. Speakers are eight feet apart. I've got my eyes closed for the majority of the album, just so I can see this in my mind's eye. And wow, you get some nice punches in the face. But great guitar in show. You get a little cowbell in here, which is cool. You get two amps here. And again, this is again part of the sound stage, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, coming out of the bottom right hand side of the sound stage, you've got a just a an amp that you can Oh, guitar amp, you can you can see it sizzling down there, and it's present. It's right up front. It's in. It's literally in the room. It's as far as my speaker is, eight feet away. On the left hand side, you have another guitar amp, but it's a little pushed farther back in the mix in the sound stage, and uh, very easy to determine that too. You're not guessing. It's the one on the left is farther back in the room, and the one on the right is right there. So again outstanding imaging. They do have a guitar solo in here as well, which will be right in the center in all its glory. So um, yeah, really, really good use of the soundstage. The last thing I put here was near the end of the song, you got very wide drums in the soundstage. The, the drums are going from as far left in the soundstage to as far right as you can get. And in Dispersed, you're getting the sound of uh, car engines, you know, driving back and forth. Just a, a really good... Um, presentation of this song. 
Last song on side three called Year Ago. Welcome to the horror flick. This, this, this song will suck you in from the beginning. It's a little creepy, I'm not gonna lie. They're using a couple different instruments here, a harmonium and a harpsichord. And this song is the intro to Steven, the character of, the, uh, of this album. Uh, every Gen X kid growing up in the 70s and 80s, you would hear the uh, you'd hear the horror music right on Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, whatever horror flick that you have in your mind. I'm trying to think of the one uh, Get Out, um, Amityville Horror. You, th th this this will put you in the same mood as far as the music goes. It's cliche in the fact that it's using all the scary tones and scary instruments. It's fan freaking tastic. Let me tell you that. Voices are right there to the point where you're like doing this a couple times like holy crap the voices are right there You start to get a lot of the different Alice Cooper voices In fact in one part on the right hand side of the soundstage you have little boy Alice voice, right? And then on the left side of the soundstage you've got grown man Alice and just Really, really cool to listen to. Yeah, that's that's what I'll say. That's the last I'll say about this particular song. All right. Now, I will say this is probably one of the drawbacks from going from a 33 to a 45 speed record, right? 33, you only have two sides. Well, going from this song a year ago on the 45, you actually have to flip the record over to get to the song Steven. On 33... I could see where, again, not having to pick up the needle and, and flip it would be ideal as far as the overall enjoyment of the, uh, the story being told. But in this case, I'll take the 45 because it sounds amazing. But anyway, so you start to turn on side four and the first song here is Steven. And the one I did the DB check on and the, uh, the dynamic range was just absolutely enormous. Steven starts with the vocals in the center, right in the room, right on the mic. Spooky. The song is really about, in my, how I interpret it, is Steven's going a little crazy, and you get to join the ride with him. Uh, and again, it's a little unnerving at times. Excellent piano sound on this song, I wanted to call out. Great horror, me horror flick melody and arrangement. The song starts very soft. By the time you get to the first chorus, again, you're, you're so engrossed in this song. The chorus comes in, it's so powerful. Boom, punch right in the face. Wakes you up. It's oh, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's, yeah, it's when he's shouting, Steven! Anyway, it, fan, fantastic. One of the lines that I thought was, uh, again, pretty creepy and, and it brings you in. I must quote, I must be dreaming, please stop screaming. And that's said time and time again throughout the song. Really, really cool. Uh, great addition of the orchestra I put in here. It really adds to the overall power of the presentation of this song. The orchestra is laid in perfectly. Yeah, and I just put here, a, a, many voices of Alice, a journey of a song. Outstanding. All right, so we leave Steven, and we go into the second song on side four, which is The Awakening. On the left, it starts off, I put Demented Piano. Again, going into that horror flicky type of tonality, the keys that they're playing in. Yeah, you get a Demented Piano on the left. Right are the vocals, and, and the, it starts with, I wake up in the basement. Yeah, that's not creepy. So you've got the, uh, the demented piano on the left side of the soundstage, the vocals kicking on the right with, I wake up in the basement. Okay. In the center, you've got uh, more piano. And uh, I put here the cymbal on the left. During, during a portion, all you're hearing is the cymbal hit, I think probably in the center of the cymbal. The decay is incredible. This is so visual and lifelike. It gave me goosebumps. The symbol on the sunk gave me goosebumps. Crazy. So crisp. And then towards the end of the song, and I noticed this last night when I listened to it probably for the 
fifth time in, in a week and a half. I don't know if it's water being dripped, in this case it might be blood being dripped, but you hear that liquid dripping and like hitting a floor, interspersed with the rest of the, um, the percussion in the song. It was extremely visual. Um, never heard that before. Really, really cool. All right, and then we go to the last song on the album called Escape. Welcome back to rock and roll. The musical theater is left behind and we're plowing forth here with a big rock and roll tune. Big, wide and deep sound stage. Maybe it even seems even bigger and larger coming from the previous song, which you, you, know, you really had to listen to. This one is all in your face, all around you. It's uh, fantastic. Uh, I put very lively sound stage. You're getting a lot of um, panning from left to right. You're getting a lot of forward and aft showing off the depth in this song. Uh, great, guitar, <laughs> great guitar sound I put here. Again, more of that you know, mid-70s just crunch. Really good stuff. The bells and chimes I put during the chorus are literally hanging out in space. Very tangible. It's like if the sounds and chimes were apples on a tree, you're sitting on the tree and you can literally pull them off. It, it, incredible visual uh, in your mind's eye with the chorus on the song. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah, the first time he says, Alice sings this line, I think it's like at the end of the, uh, at the end of the verses, he says, just get me out of here, he goes. <laughs> Instead of get me out of here, he goes, get me out of here. And you can almost see him like grabbing the mic and saying that as he pulls off. Yeah, I sound like a loon, but man, this album was just killer. And that's how it ended. Yeah, and that's how it ended. So let me tell you, I bought this for... Yep, yeah, bought it for 60 bucks. Can you see that? 60 bucks. It's a lot of money for a record. Is it worth it? Oh my gosh, is it worth it? Again, I'm listening, this is the Modest Audiophile channel. I have a system that I articulated to you earlier. It is all in, all in, $3,500, $3,500. It's a lot of money, but in the scheme of this hobby, it's pretty small. It's a modest approach. You know, it's not, um, you know, Class D uh, stuff, which is nothing wrong with it. It's, it's great. My buddy had one, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, but this is also not, you know, running a couple Macintosh mono blocks, and, you know, I don't have a, uh, a $10,000... Uh, turntable. I just this is a modest approach. I've got kids in college, so the money's going to other things. But so what I'm doing is I'm investing in the records, and I've talked before about other other um, reviews here. You know, I did get the part of the same series, part of the 70 Atlantic 75 anniversary series. I picked up Rumors on 45 by Analog Productions. Absolutely fantastic, best version I've ever heard of that. Uh, David Crosby's If I Can Only Remember My Name, absolutely fantastic. This run of uh, Analog Productions, Atlantic 75 Anniversary, I haven't found one that isn't exquisite. And man, this is right up there with it. If I had to take Truth Serum, which one I like better between all the Analog Productions? Well, right now, this one is really fitting the bill. Um, Superb record. Superb record. Can't speak highly enough of it. Hey, so that's it, everybody. I just really, really got excited when I listened to this album, and I, I wanted to share it with you. It's fantastic. So listen, do yourself a favor. We're all really busy. Um, if you were like me, and you knew the Alice Cooper hits and all of that from being a kid, maybe even singing schools out on the bus like I did, yeah. This is one that I would say, go out there, not that it's risky, but go out there if you're not that, uh, if you're not that uh, familiar with Alice. Go get this album. If you are a soundstage and imaging person and that, that's what really what gets you into this hobby, you are not going to be disappointed with this. This thing is fantastic. So do yourself a favor, find some time for you, because you matter. Do it at the end of the day. 
uh, do it during the weekend whenever it's convenient. Grab your favorite beverage. In this case, mine was some green tea because I wanted to make sure that I got my notes down perfect and have a blast. This thing is, is wonderful. And that's really what I wanted to leave with you. And I'll get back to you next week with one of the other records that I want to know what all the hubbub was about. And I've got a couple other good ones that I was shocked. Uh, so more to come soon, okay? Take care, everybody. Bye.